So this video is on reciprocal graphs. So reciprocal graphs are of an equation when x is in the denominator of a fraction. So you need to know how to sketch four types of reciprocal graphs. The first one is when it's in the form y is equal to a over x where a is a positive constant. So for example, let's sketch y is equal to 1 over x. And if we sketch this graph, it's going to look something like this where there's a curve here like this and there's a curve here like this where for the negative x values it's a negative y value and for the positive y, uh, x values it's positive uh, y values. Um, the best way in order to explain why it looks like this if you want an explanation although you don't need it obviously is that sub in some values when x is a decimal so x is very small sub in some values when x is about 1 and sub in some values for when x is big such as x is equal to 10 and you'll kind of see why it is sort of in this shape. The most important part, the most important aspect of reciprocal graphs are something called asymptotes. An asymptote is a line that the graph approaches but never actually touches. Every reciprocal graph has two asymptotes, and this reciprocal graph has an asymptote here, and we can call this asymptote y is equal to zero because that is what the line is. It's when all the values are uh, all the y values are zero, and there is an asymptote here when x is equal to zero, and we label it as this. The reason asymptotes exist is because uh, there isn't a value for where it exists. So let's take x is equal to zero for example. X cannot be zero for the equation because if you if you do make x equal to zero you're dividing by zero which you cannot possibly do it is not defined so therefore x cannot equal zero however x can equal every single value up to zero so x can equal 0 0.001 and therefore it can approach the line but it can never actually be zero so therefore it never touches it and for this asymptote y cannot equal 0 because you'll find there is no value to which 1 over x is equal to 0. 1 over x can equal 0 0.001, therefore it approaches the line, but it cannot equal 0, so therefore it never touches it. Now asymptotes are really, really important reciprocal graphs because there's no y-intercepts or roots, so therefore you have to draw these in, the actual lines like I have in red, and you have to label them as well when you are doing reciprocal graphs, when you are sketching them to actually get the marks. You do them instead of the one set or roots. They're really, really important. Just one final note. If we sketch the graph y is equal to 4 over x, what's going to happen is the is if we draw it on the same axis, this graph is going to be further away from the axis, but it's going to look the exact same. Um, this is the trend in general for all reciprocal graphs when you make the numerator bigger is all that happens is it's the exact same graph but the line moves further away from the um, the axes but bearing in mind that the asymptotes remain the exact same. The second type of graph they could ask you to draw is in the form y is equal to minus a over x. So for example let's draw y is equal to minus 1 over x. So this is the exact shape as before, the only difference is that the lines are on opposite sides um, of the axes compared to before. Um, you could explain this by doing the uh, kind of the uh, picking out points from um, bef uh, the slide before this um, to do with the um, previous um, graph. Um, but in the graph transformations um, video, we're going to find an explanation to this in which it talks about it being mirrored in the x axis, although technically you could say it's mirrored in the y axis in this example. Um, so uh, it might be a bit clearer there. But all you need to know for when there's a minus, it's just going to be on the opposite uh, uh, axes, the other two um, axes. Um, the asymptotes, remember, they're very important to label the asymptotes. I can't exaggerate this enough. You will need, they will ask them, and you will need to be able to label them in, instead of the roots and the y-intercepts for reciprocal graphs. The asymptotes are the exact same for um, this um for this graph. Here it's x is equal to 0. Remember you have to label them and y 
is equal to zero. The asymptotes are the exact same, and also like before, if we change the if we sketch y is equal to minus four over x on the same axes, we're going to find that it's going to move further away from the axes. That is the only um, thing that changes when you increase the number up here. The third type of reciprocal graph that they could ask you um, to sketch is in the form y is equal to a over x to the power of 2. So for example, let's sketch y is equal to 1 over x to the power of 2. Now in this example, remember when you square um, a, a negative number, it is also positive. So the only difference um, with this graph is that all of the y values are going to be positive. So both of the curves are going to be above the x axis like this. And that's the only difference between them. Again, you can use the points um, if you want to to explain it, but that's the only difference is that because um, the negative um, y values will now become positive, it will just be shoved onto the top on, of the x-axis. Remember to label the asymptotes, that's the most important thing. And the asymptotes are, again, the exact same. It's the exact same points that the graph approaches, but it will never touch. So here it is x is equal to 0. And here it is y is equal to 0. And once again, if we sketch on the same axis y is equal to 4 over x squared, it's going to be the exact same instead, except for the fact that it's going to be moved away from the uh, axes slightly. So the fourth and final reciprocal graph that they could ask you to draw is in the form y is equal to minus a over x squared. So for example, let's sketch y is equal to minus 1 over x squared. So remember how I said before that the square makes all the y values positive? Well, this negative next to the square will now just make all the y values negative. So both of the curves will now be below the x-axis like this. And that's the uh, and that's the difference. The shape is the same, except it will just be flipped over. Once again, this is mirrored in the x-axis, which we'll explain in the graph transformations um, video. We'll go into that um, in a bit more detail. But, but just remember that the curves are now going to be below um, the um, the x-axis. And once again, the asymptotes. Remember, you have to label them um, and you have to draw them in. The asymptotes are going to be the exact same. They are the same lines that they approach but they never touch. It's the exact same lines. And once again, finally, it's the same trend. Y is equal to minus 4 over x squared. It's going to be the exact same graph except it's going to be slightly further away from the axes. So really quick, they could ask you to sketch a graph in the form y is equal to 1 over x plus a. Where plus a is in the denominator and it's a constant. So for example, let's sketch y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. Now remember, the as um, an asymptote at x uh, equals 0 exists uh, in y equals 1 over x because x cannot equal 0 because then you'd be dividing um, by 0. But in this example, when x is equal to 0, you're not actually dividing by zero, and y will actually have a value, it'll be a half. So therefore, the graph will meet uh, the asymptote, so therefore it's no longer an asymptote, and we, the asymptote changes. The asymptote now would not be when x is equal to zero, it would be when x plus two is equal to zero, because that's when uh, we'd be divided by zero, if that was equal to zero. So x plus two is equal to 0, that would be when we're dividing by 0, so x is equal to minus 2. So the asymptote for this uh, graph will not be x is equal to 0, it will be x, x is equal to minus 2, and the other asymptote doesn't change, it's still y is equal to 0. And we can actually just sketch the graph y equals 1 over x shifting everything to the left by 2 and this is the graph for y equals 1 over x plus 2 everything is just shifted to the left because of the asymptote being shifted to the left too there is actually a y-intercept now uh, here now because everything has been shifted to the left 
everything has been shifted to the left and it happens to of um, cross the y axis and this we've already figured out is going to be a half that is when x is equal to zero it's going to be y um, is equal to a half so in general we can say for y is equal to x plus a over one the asymptote or one of the asymptotes becomes x is equal to minus a. They could ask you a very similar example. They could say y is equal to 1 over x plus a, where a is no longer in the denominator of the plus a. So for example, they could ask y to sketch y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. Now, one of the asymptotes is still going to be x is equal to 0, because x is still the denominator. So if x is equal to 0, then you're still dividing by 0. But now, y can actually be 0. You can actually find a value for when y is equal to 0. And therefore, it will meet the asymptote where y is equal to 0. And therefore, it is no longer an asymptote. The new asymptote, remember that an as um, the reason uh, this asymptote exists, the y one, is because this cannot equal 0. So if we make this the subject, so y minus 2 is equal to 1 over x, the asymptote exists, um, these asymptote, um, exists because this cannot equal 0. So the asymptote exists when this is equal to 0, and therefore it won't exist because this can't. So y minus 2 is equal to 0, so the new asymptote is then y is equal to 2. So this is the new asymptote here. And we can sketch the graph uh, y is equal to 1 over x plus 2 as y equals 1 over x, but we just shift everything up by 2. And this is the new graph. This is the graph for y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. Now there is actually a root here as well because we've shifted everything up. And this, we've already figured out up here, is equal to minus a half. So in general, for y is equal to 1 over x plus a, the asymptote, or one of the asymptotes, becomes y is equal to a. There will be a lot more information on this, so don't panic about this too much if this is um, a bit too much. There is a lot more information about this in the graph transformation uh, video. So they could combine both of the uh, things that I said in the last slide. So they could say sketch y is equal to minus x minus 1 squared under 1 plus 3. So this is of the form y is equal to minus 1 over x squared. They've just uh, applied the um, the plus a and uh, the plus a um, outside the denominator from before. So we can use this to say that the x asymptote will be minus a here, so that's going to be 1, and the y asymptote is going to be plus a here, so that's just going to be 3. So we can sketch these asymptotes, say x is equal to 1, and y is equal to 3. And then we can just sketch the graph y equals minus 1 over x squared, which looks like this. It's going to look like this. And that's the final answer. However, now it passes through the y-intercept and the root, so we have to find those. So to find the y-intercept, uh, we just make x 0. So y is equal to minus minus 1 squared over 1 plus 3. And if you put that into a calculator, you'll find that that's 2. So this point here is going to be 2. And then to find the roots, you just find you just make y zero. So zero is going to equal minus x minus one squared under one plus three. Move the uh, three to the other side to get minus three is equal to minus x minus one squared under one times everything by minus one to get three is equal to x minus one squared under one. And then, div uh, and then do 1 divided by both sides. So 1 divided by 3 is 1 over 3. And 1 divided by this side would flip everything, remember. It would be x minus 1 squared. And then um, you would do, um, you would square root both sides to get plus or minus 1 
over root 3 which if you put into a calculator you'll find is plus or minus root 3 over 3 which is equal to x minus 1 and you'll find that the roots are x is equal to plus or minus root 3 over 3 plus 1 so x is equal to root 3 over 3 plus 1 or x is equal to minus root 3 over 3 plus 1 so this root here will be the minus root 3 over 3 plus 1 and this root here will be the plus root 3 over 3 plus 1 um, but once again um, there is so much more on this on graph transformations um, so wait for that um, if you're not too sure it's not the end of the world <laughs>